Hey, it's Timo with ProductiveSuperDad.com and today's topic is how to become a better time estimator and how to avoid those overly optimistic time estimates in your everyday life. Now, let me give you an example what I mean by this. Let's say that you have been talking with your spouse and you said that, you know, honey, I'm going to hit the gym, I'm going to do some exercises and then I'm getting back home after one hour. That's a great way of, you know, communicating with your spouse and with the rest of your family. You are actually telling what you are about to do next and uh, when you're getting back home. But rather, do you think that you should be saying, I'm getting back home after one and a half hours? Do you think that that estimate would be much more realistic than that 60 minutes, one hour estimate? And here's the thing, the reason why I wanted to bring up this thing is because I think that too many times we are too optimistic on our own schedules, what we are doing and how much a certain task is going to take. Or a certain activity for that matter. So for example, what has happened to me in the past was that uh, I, have been doing some, I have been doing some exercises and uh, I said to my wife that, you know, it's going to take like, you know, one or two hours for me to do the ex exercise and then I'm coming back home. But then I have realized is that I'm getting back home like 20 or 30 minutes late. And because of that, I started to add some buffer to my original time estimates. I wanted to be a little bit more pessimistic and realistic on, on my estimations. So... What this is something that I want you to do as well. Try to add a little bit buffer to your original estimates, and that way they become much more realistic. Now there really isn't any rule of thumb how much buffer you should add to your activity. It really depends. But one thing I can say for sure, and this is actually a great way to to actually give proper estimates when it comes to recurring tasks tasks that you are doing on a consistent basis. Let's say that you are going to the gym like, you know, like two or three times per week. So you have a recurring activity going on. So the next time you go to the gym, you actually measure how much time is it going to take for you to go to the gym and do the exercise and then come back home. And that way you have a, at least some sort of a figure to tell to your spouse some sort of a uh, proper estimate. How much is it going to take you to do your exercise? And this same recurring thing applies to any other you know, activity that, that, that is recurring. You can actually measure the time. But in those other situations, it's really up to your own uh, judgment and your own estimations. And you, you just have to try uh, what is the right buffer for your original uh, time estimate. Anyway, this is the tip that I wanted to tell you this time. Uh, if you're watching this video through YouTube, click on the description box. There is a link to my blog, sign in to my list. Uh, if you're watching this through my uh, blog, please share this video on Facebook, on Twitter, by, <laughs> by clicking on the vertical bar on the left. And uh, I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.